So what we're going to have a look at is soil conductivity. EC, you might see it uh, uh, you know, when you're actually reading a table or something. And conductivity is measured in microsiemens. And we have an instrument like this. You've got the on button at the top and then the off button are there, okay? So all you've really got to do with this is press the on button. The probe is in distilled water. And what you would do, you'd have a hydroponic system. So you might be growing tomatoes, cucumbers, something. And what would happen, you'd have like a big sink or somewhere where the water runs into. And that, a pump in there which pumps it up, it runs down and back in the sink. So your sink is going to have your water with your nutrients in it, okay? So what we do is, imagine that's, uh, it, that's in the sink now. We would put the probe, now it's been distilled, we put the probe into the solution where your hydroponic solution is, and we're going to take a reading. And in this case, the reading is about, well, it's settling about three, well, it's going up a little bit still. Wait for it just to settle. I reckon it's going to settle about, say, 3.78, somewhere around about there. Could even be getting, could even hit 3.8. So that's your reading. There are different types of testers. You can buy one like this, and you've got a switch on the top, and you take the bottom bit off, and you put that, and this hasn't got any batteries in, so we can't see, but you put that in the solution, and that will also give you a reading. Same kind of thing, okay? Well, I don't really understand what conductivity is. Right, so what is conductivity? Good question. So what you're actually doing here, this is measuring the salts in the water. So when you're adding potassium and nitrogen and phosphorus, maybe even a bit of sodium at times, uh, calcium, all those things are, are create uh, sol uh, solutes and salts in the water. And so they dissolve in the water, so that's making it more salty. Now, when you look at a chart, of what plants require, most plants require somewhere between 1.2 and 2.5 as a conductivity. Okay, if it's in there, you know you've got about the right amount of food. However, tomatoes will go right up to four because obviously they're quite hungry, they feed quite a lot. Carnations up to about 3.5, and you've got things like cabbage and beans, which again, require quite, quite a high content, okay? So if you have a reading of, say, less than one, one is a good thing to remember. Anything less than one, and it's probably a bit too dilute, so there's not enough food for the plant. What was it actually measured in again? What was the Anything more than about three uh, is okay for tomatoes, but it's not so good for your general plants. Okay, it's getting a bit high. So what will happen then is water will pass out of the plant by osmosis. So osmosis works. If you've got a, a dilute solution and you've got a salty solution, and the way that it works, imagine that the this is the plant, okay? And so this is a plant cell. We'll pretend that's a plant cell. And so we've got our plant cell. <laughs> So we've got our plant cell, and the way that a plant cell, it's got a membrane around the cell, and osmosis is the passage of water from a weak solution, a distilled solution, to a strong solution through a semi-permeable membrane. Okay. So if it's watery outside the plant, happy days, water passes in. Plant's happy. If this got too salty, what do you think happens? Water passes out the plant, that's called exosmosis or reverse osmosis. What happens then, the cell membrane pulls away from the cell wall and the plant collapses and it can't recover. So it dies and goes all brown and dies. So what we've got to make sure is that we're always keeping that at the right sort of levels. We also test the pH if we've got hydroponics as well to make sure it's between 6.5 and 7 or whatever the plant prefers. Thank you.